Hello everyone. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Welcome everybody. Hi. Good to see you tonight. Hi, hi, hi. We're just gonna wait for a few people to come on in so we can start. Super excited for today. Welcome, hello. welcome. Don't forget to share this video right away on your page. I'm doing it right now. Yeah, me too. I have to do it. Just push the share button. Good to see you tonight. Can you share for me? Hello. Hi, Hi guys. Good to see you. Hi, Mugisha. Welcome. We miss you. Hi, everybody. Good to see you guys. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Stacy. Thank you for tuning in. Yes, welcome everyone. Hello, Crosspoint people, friends and family. Welcome, Gita. Welcome, welcome. This is actually one of my favorite songs, yeah. Seasons by Hillsong. It speaks so much to me. So, you know, I wanted to share it. Hello. So just to let you know, this is um, a little interview we're doing, um, but there's going to be a time for questions. So if you have any questions right now, just prepare them in advance and then you'll be able to send them at the right time. All right. Awesome. 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 Hey, come on, share, share. I'm not seeing any share. Hey girls, how are you? Hello, Enak. Hello guys. Hey Prince, how are you? Sandra, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. We're gonna wait just um, a couple minutes before we're beginning. Welcome, Pastor Theo. Good to see you. Hello, hello. Yes, I believe my season will come. I believe your season, your season is coming. Come. Hey, Pam. Good to see you. Hi, guys. Hello, hello, hello. Good to see you all. Hello, Daniela. Hi. Good to see you. God bless God you. God bless you too. God bless you. There. God bless you. Welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. Awesome. Hello, Sonia. Good to hey. see you. Welcome, welcome. Missing you so much, Sonia. Welcome, Lori, Evangelist Lori Martin. Good Hi. to see you. Don't forget to comment so we can interact with you. That's right. This hello, is a Vanessa. Conversation. Yes. Hi. Hey, Nadia, Nana. Welcome, welcome. It's good to see all of you. We're just going to start in a minute or two. Just want to give time for everybody to come in. Hey, Pastor D, how are you? Good to see you. Hey. Oh, this is so excited too. Super excited. I miss you so much. I miss you so much. Yes. Aww. Hey. Aww. Hi, Vanessa. Vanessa, how is your baby? <laughs> Yes, Ritza. Yeah. We count on you for questions for sure. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. I'm so happy you're excited because I'm super excited too. too. You know? <laughs> <We'll comment. All> right. <laughs> just don't forget to share, okay? All right. You just put the share button, right? That's yeah. what you do. You just push That's the it. share button. Hello. I think uh, Henry, welcome, welcome. Praise the Lord. This is, uh, yes, this song is amazing. I'm just going to open up in prayer and then we're just going to go for it. Father God, we give you praise. We thank you for today. Uh, this is a day that you have set aside, appointed for me and my precious daughter to come and share our life in the way that would minister to one or many people. We pray that you just lead us by your spirit. We pray that Whoever needs to listen to this will be there to listen mm -hmm. to it. And uh, we just pray that your will and your glory may be manifested through this. 
Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 So I'm so, so, so excited. I'm so yes. super excited for this because for me, this is a dream come true. I hope you guys can hear us well. Everything is good so we can just get in. Yeah. If there's any issues, just write it in the comments. All right? That's right. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Welcome, Esther. So this for me, it's a dream come true. I've always wanted to sit with this mighty girl of God uh, and mighty girl of mine. She's yeah. a true minister of the gospel. I just love her. I'm so proud of her, of who she is, who she has become. And it's my daughter, my firstborn, yeah. Rafi, Rafaela Diallo. And uh, today we decided we wanted to share a part of our life, of her story, so that, yeah. uh, I don't know, somebody can be blessed, can be ministered to. Mm -hmm. You can get to know us even more yeah. in a different setting. That's right. And I think her story can minister to so many. And... Mm -hmm. I'm hoping this is not just the only time. Yeah, this is just sure. the beginning of something. Amen. So anyhow, uh, what is a PK? You know, PK yeah. is just a pastor's kid. Pastor's kid. <laughs> pastor kid. You know, she yeah. is the PK pastor's kid. I think ever since she was little, all she's known is ministry, church, and everything. And I just wanted we share her life, her story, for. For everyone. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, I definitely want this to target, you know, don't think this is just for other PKs. This is for any child, you know, who maybe your parents are in a leadership. Mm. Your parents will become pastors. Your mm -hmm. parents are uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. And this is also for the parents who are pastors, mm -hmm. who are leaders, and for parents in general who have kids, who have uh, teenagers, whatever the case may be, this is really for anyone and everyone. And uh, just open up your heart and really dig in. And hopefully what I share with you today is going to bring some light to certain of your issues that you may have. And uh, maybe you've been, because this is called dealing with church hurt. So maybe mm. or certainly you've experienced church hurt. You know, um, it is what it is. So hopefully you'll be able to, you know, hear something new, hear a different perspective and understand that there's hope and you're not the only one and there's surely a way of coming out. So carry on with that. Wow, 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 yeah. wow, wow. Anyway, I'm going to ask, we're going to do it in an interview and see yes. how God is going to lead us. Yes, Amen. yes, yes. And prepare your questions as well. We're going to answer your questions live here. So prepare your questions and uh we'll answer them on the video yes so my first question to you is what made your life as unique and different uh, from others kids life because mm -hmm. you're a pastor's kid okay so there's several things that maybe made me a little bit unique or different uh, when i look at my life and i want i look at the life of other people my age mm. and i'm looking back even from years ago when i was even five six seven years old i actually have a few notes here um so hopefully this will help to answer um well obviously the first part of my life that was maybe different than other people is that most of it was centered around church so since i was born going to church even before my parents became pastors going to church was a normal thing you know and it was awesome i really enjoyed going to church as a kid um seeing my friends i didn't know anything outside of it really so a large part of my life was ministry even though they were the ones doing the ministering it was still connected to me and i was also the firstborn so for the first five years i was alone i didn't have any siblings so I was always tagging along with my parents, going to prayers, going to the first service, come home, take a nap, go to the second service. Um, and I didn't have any issue with it. You know, most people would think, oh, you were probably so tired. I actually didn't have any issue with it. And I really enjoyed it. Um, so there was good part. And there was also parts that were a little bit challenging, uh, maybe not being able to get as much attention that I would have needed. And at that age, I didn't really know that I needed attention. But growing up, you know, you start to realize there's a few things that you may have missed. Um, 
Another thing that makes me quite unique is that um, I was exposed. Mm. As a young kid, I was exposed to a lot of things, a lot of people, a lot of information. Mm. So don't think your kids are not understanding what's going on. There was a lot of things I was exposed to. I would see people coming in the house uh, for counseling, you know, all of a sudden, you know, I have, honestly, let me, let me tell you guys something. I have no choice but to succeed in life <laughs> because so many people came for counseling and I heard all the advice only to find out that people don't take the advice, but that's another story. <laughs> but I have no reason but to succeed because I was, you know, getting all kinds of people in my house, you know, listening to their problems or, um, you know, they're maybe going through a divorce. They need deliverance. Um, so I was exposed to all kinds of information that most kids didn't really, you know, they were not exposed to. Um, with that comes the other thing, you know, there was many people coming into my home, many people coming into my life indirectly through my parents. I would hear them on the phone, helping out, crying with people, praying with people. And then sometimes those same people would leave the church and mm. I would... I would find out, you know, maybe they were talking bad about us and it would freak me out. So honestly, that really did affect me as a kid because you, even though you're not directly connected to them, just having those people around you, you feel like, oh, we're in this together for life or for the long run, only to find out they leave. They'll mm. leave with a group of people. They'll go talk horrible about my parents. And even as a child, even though I didn't say anything, it really bothered me. It really hurt me. And I, I think you remember, oftentimes I would tell my mom, can you do something? Or I'm going to do something, you know, at little me, what am I going to do? You know, can you do something? And oftentimes my parents would tell me, no, God is going to deal with it. And I was like, you know what God's going to do? God's going to deal with what? This person is lying on your name. This person is destroying our family name. God's going to do what? God's going to vindicate, you know? So I was hearing all these kinds of terms. I see people come in, people come out, people come in, people come out. So it also got to a point where I was afraid to even connect to someone. Because I'm like, this one, we may be close now. I may be going to their house for sleepovers, little Rafi. But they're going to turn their backs on us. They're going to say, you know, to hell with the, avec les dialogues, with Crosspoint Church. So that kind of made my life a little bit different. I was exposed to things that I didn't ask for. So I was born in this family. I didn't ask to be born in this family, but I'm also dealing with consequences by default. Mm. You know, so there was a good part and there was also a part that was right. kind of weird. Right, right. Um, can, can you stop you right yeah, there? Because sure. you said two points for yeah. me that are really important that we need to point out. Number one, the first point is for parents. Yes. Uh, you are okay to go to church twice a day. I mean, we were in church sometimes the whole day. She was okay, yeah. but because I think you were with us everywhere. That's what made it okay. Because as young children, they just want to be with their family, you know. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, you know, because we are Pentecostal Holy Ghost, I'm like, I, I usually ask my kids, was it not too weird <laughs> for you to see us screaming or speaking yeah. in the Holy Ghost? And either Rafi or Aisha, they say no, they were okay with it because yeah. they were born into it. So it was something that was natural into it. Yeah. So which is good. I want to encourage parents, you know, even kids are young to expose them to yeah. God. Yeah. Every form of God, every side of God. God has a way to, to leave an imprint to whatever mm -hmm. that is God and that is spiritual yeah. in them. So for you, I think that was a positive yes. side. That's why you were okay with being with us yeah. wherever we went. Yeah? yeah. That's number one. Do you want to comment on this one? No. Number two was, I just want to clarify. So when we were having meeting or counseling, uh, you know, if it was something very important for a young age child, of course, we'll send her upstairs to watch a movie or something. Of course. It's, it's important that I clarify yeah. that whatever meeting and counseling, uh, the, the person will be okay with having yeah, 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 a what sure. Rafi little yeah. Rafi around. Yeah. So, so yes, yeah. you were exposed. Yeah. So for the first point, that's mm -hmm. like I said, going to church for me was I never saw anything weird. I never mm -hmm. did. I ever complain? I, no. I never complained to go to church. You know, surprisingly, you would think that oh, your your parents forced you to come here. I really 
had no issue. And when it came to spirituality mm -hmm. and seeing screaming, <laughs> bro, if I did, <laughs> I'm going to write a book one day. <laughs> so if I see weird stuff happening, because it was now, now that I'm born again, I know, uh -huh. but because it was pure, because mm. it was a thing of God, mm. my spirit That's as right. a child knew that it was good. It connected. Yes. Yes. So don't be afraid. Like she said to, you know, to expose your children to all the different sides of god mm -hmm. because when it's god it feels right mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yes so whether you're puking on the floor whether you're casting out some demons mm -hmm. whether you're just crying you know mm. oh my god my mom she spends <laughs> she spent years in front of hillsong crying 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 and i was of course i was wondering why is she crying is she okay but my spirit understood that whatever whoever she's crying to mm -hmm. it's it's right it's pure that's right you know so i can never forget you know one day you know i loved hillsong yeah. you know uh god um, apostle brought hillsong this the dvd the first time rafi was like six months old so she was six months old so and then i connected so much with mm -hmm. hillsong so i would put her in the saucer right before the tv yeah you know to listen to darlene check and uh, to the point that you, you, you used to call Darlene Check, Mommy, this is holy. Yeah. Because Darlene Check would sing songs about the holiness, holiness. of God. Yeah. So I, when Rafi was little, she would say, Mommy, look, watch, holy, holy, that's her name. Yeah. For, for her, Darlene Check names was, was holy, holy yeah. because he kept saying, Holy, holy is your yes. name in some of her songs, which was so beautiful. It was, it was, it was. <laughs> I, so. remember, I remember when she was, she was two years old. I yeah. think we were in Airdrie. I was worshiping and I was crying, you know, just, I, I think I had a ministry of crying whenever I was do, yes. yeah, worshiping. And then one day she came to me, she was little, she was like maybe a year and a half. She came to me, I was in the living room and I was just praying and then crying to God. And I remember, and I was in such a deep, sad place in, in my heart. And I remember she came to me and she said, mommy, Please don't cry. Jesus loves you. And those words, I can never forget it. That, uh, you know, she ministered to me at the place where I needed the most at her little, little age. And which showed mm -hmm. that whatever I was doing, worshiping yes. and praying, her little ears was open. open yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was open. So whatever we expose or we give to our children, exactly. that's what's going to come in. And it's going to come in in shapes or form that you know only god yes, knows yes and mm -hmm. also it may not come mm -hmm. right away because mm -hmm. sometimes we're like you know you want to give your kids this 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 and mm. you and you get discouraged because mm. you feel like they're not catching it but god will allow it to happen at the right moment mm -hmm. so like in, in her case when she was in her low moment that's when it came out mm -hmm. so keep on leading by example even if you feel like you know it's not going anywhere those kids are like sponges they absorb everything mm -hmm. so keep on keep on doing your walk and uh, so don't you think yeah. it's it's passion that gets um like our passion for god was mm -hmm. i don't, I don't want to say important it was it caught your spirit because you know people i, I think people follow passion yeah you know, that's really when, deep. Yeah. Yeah. Passion. When you see somebody mm -hmm. is passionate, you'll be interested by the passion. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What do you think? I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah, that's definitely true. And mm -hmm. also to see how, you know, consistent and real mm. they were about this thing. There, I don't think there was a time in my life that I've ever doubted the existence of God or whether doing ministry was legitimate or even the right thing. You know, because I saw how devoted and consistent and despite everything that comes with it, it was just, they, it's like they decided this is what we're doing for life. So mm -hmm. I kind of found security in it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as a kid. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. That's right. That's but understanding right. that no matter what may change in life, this thing that they're doing is the constant mm -hmm. in it. That's so right. that was really something. That's right. You know, I want to bring up a point you talked about how... Yes. Because I didn't have family here when Calgary in in the late nineties. Uh, my husband didn't have family, we didn't have family. So church was really our only family, which mm -hmm. means that the people who came close in our lives became family, family. to you. 
So we, you had many aunties. So, but you talked about how you struggle with connecting because people would come and go. Yeah. You would connect with somebody. You would love them so much. Mm -hmm. The next thing they've left church and they've left your life. Yes. And, uh, you know, and it, it, it leaves a scar mm -hmm. on, on a young child mm -hmm. when you don't have, you know, when everybody, somebody comes, you connect deeply, you love them and then they leave, yeah. you know? So how were you able to manage that? Um, it was really, really tough. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh my God, there were yeah. so many people that I really gave my, my heart. Mm -hmm. And I saw them, they came to sleep over at our house. Mm -hmm. We would wake up together at, in the morning, we would pray together. Mm -hmm. They were my, my aunties, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And then one day, I, I don't know, they get married or mm -hmm. something happens, they disappear. Mm -hmm. And for me, the pain was not them leaving the church. Mm -hmm. I, I, it was not that. The pain was that I realized what the only thing that connected us apparently was church. Mm -hmm. So as soon as they left the church, it's like they disowned me as their little, you know, Rafi that they could almost treat as their own daughter, right? And it happened many times um, back to back. So I'm like, you know what? Wow, this is, these aunties, lad, they're just, mm -hmm. what's going on? So that was, that was really hard. So which meant that you felt with a lot of rejection because, you know, you are the flower girl. You are, of you know course. what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah the that's... flower girl at every wedding and, um, you know, life happens. And I understand things couldn't be the same, but the cutting off mm -hmm. and sometimes not only cutting off, sometimes turning their backs on my family. Mm -hmm. That was... Sorry, baby. Not, uh, that was not really interesting. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. For so, sure. For sure. So what would be the lesson for parents? When for it comes, parents? Yeah. To when it comes to when the it comes relationship, to the people they bring around their children. Yeah. Um, one thing I could say is that children, mm. uh, they have the capacity to really connect deeper than you think. Mm -hmm. So whoever you bring home and whoever you allow your children to go stay at their homes, understand that there's, there's a deep connection that's made. Mm -hmm. And um, just, just to watch out, make mm -hmm. sure that that connection is, you know, legitimate and mm -hmm. you know that there won't be a cutting off like mm -hmm. that because it leaves a, a deep scar mm -hmm. in the life of of young girls and mm -hmm. um yeah you yeah. know it's only for me it was the grace of god that allowed mm -hmm. me to connect again after years and years mm -hmm. but as a kid I, I didn't understand what grace was so for me in my head let me just say this for me, having an auntie and they, they find their kunta kunte, <laughs> oftentimes I didn't agree with their husbands. I'm yeah. like, this husband is not good. And they disappear. It's like they're getting married. They're cut off for life. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's how the child sees it. That's right. You understand? That's Us right. adults, we see it differently. Mm -hmm. So watch out who you bring around your kids and who you allow your kids to, to connect, connect with, with at a deep level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. It's for only sure. the grace of God, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, and those lessons, because that's what made you unique and very wise at a young age. And it took me time, some time to understand because mm -hmm. she would say something like, oh, yeah, they're going to bet this one is going to get married and then I won't see them again, you know. And uh, it took me a while to know and to feel your pain. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but you are able to overcome. Yeah. You know, Able because to, uh, you've never closed your heart to people, even up to now, mm -hmm, regardless, mm -hmm. you still open up to any new yeah. person, you yeah. know, that comes in your life, in our lives, which is so amazing, baby. Yeah. It's so amazing. So when I talk about, uh, some of you may follow me on my page, when I talk about seasonal relationships, mm -hmm. it stems even from being as a kid, mm -hmm. you know, understanding their seasons, unfortunately, sometimes it doesn't end right, mm -hmm. but um, you can understand that it was for a season and a time. Mm -hmm. And like I said, my parents, they always taught me, you know, never to fight mm -hmm. back, just to leave it. Mm -hmm. And actually years and years down mm -hmm. the lines, God, it's funny, the moment you don't want revenge anymore, that's mm -hmm. when God steps in mm -hmm. and convicts the heart of someone. Mm -hmm. And they may come back to you mm -hmm. and, you know, that's how it works. But just to understand in this life, there's... You don't fight, you know, God does his thing, so. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when you were little, she used to wake up like at three in the, in the, in the morning and she would just pray with one, one, of, one of our closest friends. In the morning, she was a deep, powerful intercessor. 
you grew up really yeah. you know in god and uh and and it has shaped you to mm -hmm. become who you are now you know yeah. now what 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 is it you think was the greatest positive in impact of uh, of her being a pk uh in a young age right yeah um the positive impact i would say is <laughs> Uh, my mom calls it pure indoctrination. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like I said, kids are, they absorb everything you do and they're really watching you. Mm -hmm. So everything that my parents were doing, you know, even though if I wasn't directly connected to it, I saw what was happening and all those things, I ended up, it ended up being beneficial to me in the right time. Mm -hmm. So all of that, that was, it's like storage. Mm. All of that, it's like I used all that storage mm. now, mm. you know? So that's definitely the most positive, positive aspect is just having that atmosphere all around. Mm -hmm. Seeing my mom crying all the time in front of Hillsong. So that when my turn came where I had to face my own pain, mm. I knew where I can run. I knew mm. that, okay, I, if I, I can try Hillsong, mm -hmm. I can cry that way, you know? Mm. So it's just like, um, it's like a storage of amazing things that God will eventually put into play at the right time. So that's, that's the right. most positive thing. That's amazing. So somebody asked, what is indoctrination? I'm just Googling it <laughs> to give you the best meaning yes. of what is the word indoctrination, but in a positive way. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the process of teaching a person or a group to accept a set of beliefs without criticizing it is mm. instruction and is teaching so in my heart was i always tell my kids i'm gonna indoctrinate you you know yeah. i'm gonna be around music i wanna be around yeah. preaching i'm gonna be around that's god and whether you like it or not your little exactly. sponge mind and spirit will yes. catch it yeah i'm not gonna provoke you push you to into it but i'm exactly. gonna create an atmosphere, an atmosphere in this family so that that's all you hear yeah. that's all you see that's what you yeah. know so pure indoctrination yeah. that's what i did yeah <laughs> and notice how she said i'm gonna you know i'm gonna create that atmosphere because the bible says you should train your children in the way they should go mm -hmm. sometimes when we hear training your kids maybe you might think only sitting down literally mm -hmm. with a verse and you know sometimes it's just by doing mm -hmm. you make it happen you you do it they catch it. That's what mm -hmm. they learn how to do. Mm -hmm. So in this case, actions do speak louder than words. Mm -hmm. And um, that's definitely how you, you, you indoctrinate a kid. <laughs> I'm so, say it's assimilation. Assimilation. <laughs> yeah. So your kids don't know you're on assignment, but you, you know what you're doing. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So. You know, it's so interesting. Even after 20 years, you know, once, not 20, maybe 15, 16, uh, Sometimes I would hear Rafi pray or sing. I'm like, mm, this is me That's when me. she was little. Mm. She's just repeating yes. whatever she's heard I me heard. do. Yeah. And it's so amazing, right? Yep, 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 yep. yep. <laughs> and like I said, it always comes at the right moment. Because mm -hmm. I remember I used to be scared sometimes in my room as a kid. And then all of a sudden, everything that I heard in my house, it's, it comes to life. Uh, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. <laughs> then I don't even know if I'm saying the verse properly. <laughs> but I'm like, I think it works, you know? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Uh -huh. So it just comes at the right moment. So you just, you guys just feed my mind with a bunch of stuff. <laughs> and whenever I need it, it just comes. So, so cute. She would say something and she would say, Mommy, is that a verse? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what the difference was between her speech and Bible verses. I just knew it was right. So let me throw all of it together. <laughs> So, Which is so powerful, baby. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. So, so now, amazing. so now you're riding on your parents' faith. Yes. You know, in your in your young age as a little kid, and then, and then you love church, and then at one point, I noticed you started changing in the way um, you love church. I mean, you started being more in a ne negative side. What is mm -hmm. it that brought that change, and at what age? Okay. So. I'm going to talk starting from 2016 all the way back. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing for sure is that also I want to add, I was extremely uh, yeah. I, quiet, you yes. know, so many, most people thought I was very timid and, you know, shy, which was not the case. Mm. Um, sometimes things can happen in your life 
where it's almost as if your personality changes. So you're actually an outgoing person, but because of different struggles, you become quiet, you know, and timid. So that's who I was at a certain point. Like my mom said, I was into church. I, I didn't have a problem with it. I loved being around that atmosphere. And out of nowhere, I shifted. Mm -hmm. And um, this is why this title is called Dealing with Church Hurt. And I'm a pastor's child. I think I'm the right person <laughs> to talk about this, but I'm sure you guys can relate. So uh, I think when I started to become a teenager, mm. you know, I was trying to find my voice. I was trying to find who I was. I was trying to be involved with the young adults of my church. You know, I was excited. And little by little, certain things would start to happen mm. and it was pushing me away. Mm. Uh, for example, uh, the first week that I joined the young adults in the youth, because youth, mm -hmm. I was now a youth, uh, I was at the age of being a youth, I was with, you know, with the, my, my friends at church, and all of a sudden, they're like, shh, be quiet. And I'm like, when I came around. So mm -hmm. every time I would come, they would say, be quiet. And I'm like, why? Why did, why did, why they want to be, they don't want me to be a part of the conversation. They'll say, she's going to tell her parents. And I'm like, what? She's going to tell her parents. So then it started clicking that these people, they saw me differently. Mm. So they didn't see me anymore as a little friend at church. They saw me as the pastor's child who's a snitch, mm. who's probably going to go tell her parents everything we're talking about. So little stuff like that would start to happen. And I started to realize that I was maybe different because I never felt different. Like I said, going to church was it was awesome. It was normal. So then as a teenager, you start to realize, hey, maybe I'm not the same kind of teenager as everyone else. Mm. And people don't want to, you know, they don't want to talk about things around me. They don't want to do stuff with me. So that was hurtful. Mm -hmm. And um, felt rejected I, felt rejected. Mm -hmm. I felt rejected. I felt rejected in the very place that I was finding fun because mm -hmm. I used to have a lot of fun at church. Mm -hmm. um, and then other situations would happen. This one, I have to talk about it because I think it's, it's so funny. Um, one day, because I was trying to find my, you know, my color, my personality as a teenager. You're finding yourself. And um, I want to thank, of course, I want to thank my parents because they always supported me. And they were always, you know, whatever I wanted to do, they're like, yeah, go for it. You know how they are. They're just encouraging, encouraging, encouraging. Um, so one day, I was like, you know what? I want to do this hairstyle. So my dad, he actually shaved my head for me. <laughs> he shaved half of my head. And then the other side, I did braids. And it, I thought it was a beautiful hairstyle. You know, we were all in the house. They were so happy for me. They're like, you look amazing. That Saturday night, my mom, she even, you know, helped me choose an outfit. She's like, tomorrow we're going to church. You're going to show your hairstyle, you know, shaved side, a nice makeup, put on this red dress, high heels. And for me, it was a big deal as a teenager, you know, something new. And then on you know, to my big surprise, I get to church and I wasn't getting the reaction that I, as a kid, I was looking for. Mm. I thought the same joy that my parents were giving me, I would probably get it from other people. Like, oh, Rafi, you know, she's coming out, blah, blah, blah. I wasn't getting that. <laughs> Your dad is cool. Yeah, you're <laughs> very cool. <laughs> and people would come to me, they'll say, you know what? You're not allowed. Apostle's daughter is not allowed to have a hairstyle like that. Okay? And I would look at them and I was shocked. You know, sometimes you're in a state of shock where you don't even know how to answer. And you're so broken because you were expecting them, you know, to, to rejoice with you. You know, many, many people that day, mm -hmm. you know, they would come to me and say, you know, as a pastor's kid, you honestly shouldn't have that hair. You know? Um... No, it doesn't work. And then I would respond and I was like, but my dad is the one who cut my hair, you know, and I was confused. Mm. And uh, they, you know, of course they would be quiet, but I felt that, you know, this joy that I'm feeling, I'm not getting it from other people. And so there was just little... This is one day somebody from the pulpit. Yeah, unfortunately, even on the pulpit, somebody literally said it by accident. Me and that person are really cool friends. I love him with all my heart. But he said in the microphone by accident, Apostle's daughter shaved her head mm -hmm. during worship. So I was like, oh, oh my God, this is, this is just ridiculous, you know? Mm. And little stuff like that would happen. So you felt like, you know, because you're a pastor's kid, people put so much high expectation on you. And so wrong expectation. Wrong, yeah, yes. And you couldn't be you. You had to, of course. to be 
apostle's kid or pastor Nadia's daughter. Exactly, exactly. So I was wondering now, what is an apostle's kid? Because I think I'm doing the right thing. I'm happy to be here. You know, what is being an apostle's kid now? Mm -hmm. You know, if my parents accept me, why can't you? Why can't the church even accept me, you know? And um, it started to create a lot of confusion inside. A lot of confusion. I would go outside and I wouldn't know who is for me, who's against me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, walking in the mall, someone would be like, oh, Apostle's daughter is in the mall. So what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, what is an Apostle's daughter? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, what mm -hmm. is that? And then just, it's like the enemy, he starts to lie to you. He'll mm -hmm. use the weakness of human beings, the ignorance of human beings, because it's not... It's not coming out of a place of evil. It's mm. ignorance. Mm. So he'll use people's ignorance to begin to lie to you now and mm. say, you know what? You see, this church, mm? your parents, they're sweating they're for these people, but they don't care about you. Mm. They don't even like you. Why are you here? You know, and uh, it just created a lot of mess. Yeah. I, rem I remember that day specifically. Yeah. You were really so heartbroken. Yeah. Uh, because you were really hurt deeply. But the sad thing was like some people who wouldn't even talk to you in the yes, regular, regular day for day. nice stuff because they saw something they thought was negative would yes. come and tell you. Yes. You know, yes. almost like you felt like the whole church people had the right to come tell them yeah. what they agree and do not agree with. And, and I think as a pastor yeah. kid, a lot of children go through that, you know, yeah. where... Every member thinks they have a right to come a and say. tell you a yes. say about who you are and how you are, yeah. you know? Yes, uh, and, and I want to just take that part down, people that I've never spoken to. Mm. So I, I want people to understand that when you, when you give an advice to mm. someone, make sure it comes from a place of relationship. Mm. Don't give advice mm -hmm. when there's no relationship. Mm -hmm. You're that's you know that goes for anyone. Mm -hmm. You're just you're breaking the spirit of somebody. Mm -hmm. So even if let's say there was something really bad, mm -hmm. this is my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. If you really care about that person but there's no relationship, go to to someone who does have a relationship and allow them to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. You know so that you don't become an opportunity for somebody to even lose their faith. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very dangerous. Sometimes we, <laughs> police, exactly. Sometimes we think we're police and we can just go blah, 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 blah. But everything you do must come from a place of wisdom. I just, mm -hmm. I really want to add mm -hmm. that. Yeah. that I mean, you were young. F I, I believe that each person, whoever came to you, it was never from a place of being mean. It's right, trying to watch for you, but in a, exactly. in a different, un, um, unwise, way. unwise yeah. way, you know, yeah. which is... Uh, you know, I think something we forget sometimes mm -hmm. that children are little person in themselves. Yes. You know, so when you, you take them as a little whole, whole per person, have emotions, who have desire, plans, and dreams, mm -hmm. then you can talk to them on that level. level. You know? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Mm. Sorry. Baby. Yeah. So stuff like that would happen. Another, you know, issue that I had was oftentimes feeling forgotten. Mm. So I like to call the old me no mm. name because people didn't know my name. Mm. <laughs> they, my name was Pastor's Kid, mm. PK. Mm. Whenever someone would introduce me, hey, this is the pastor's daughter. Mm. You know, that's the only thing they could say about me. And, you know, of course, not to be mean, but out of ignorance. But I'm a person mm. and I see that and I'm like, okay, so I don't matter. Mm. I don't matter. This place that I'm supposed to feel accepted, I don't matter. My, I don't have a name. No mm. name. I can count how many times someone said my name. This is Rafi. She's this years old and she's the pastor kid. Mm. You know, so I found like, okay, so my only, the only thing that makes me semi important is the fact that I'm the daughter of my parents. Mm. So that was breaking mm -hmm. or whenever, you know, sometimes people would come to me, you know, hey, how are you? And I'm like, oh, there's hope. Someone wants to talk to me. I have food for your mom and your dad. Put it, put it in the car. Or I have a gift for your parents. Put it in the car. Have a nice day. See you next. And I'm like, you know, so I don't matter. I don't matter. I don't matter at all. Or if I was lucky, you know, sometimes they would ask me, how's your brother? You know, but I felt like no one saw me. Nobody wanted to see me as a human being. I want to stress again, not because of being mean, 
These are amazing people, but because they were just not aware at the time. So all this made me want to be like, you know what? I don't want to be a part of this church anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a part of this church anymore. And thank God, every season of my life, he brought maybe one or two people mm -hmm. who saw me for me. Mm -hmm. And those one or two people gave me hope mm -hmm. to stay in the Amen. church. Amen. I was like, okay, at least there's these, you know, these two people. We have a real relationship. Mm -hmm. So that really, God, I'm telling you, God, he will always bring one or two. Mm -hmm. at the right time and don't neglect those one or two because those are the people who will keep you at the right place Amen. so it got so bad to the part where miss no name rafi i would sit in the service and my stomach was hurting so i had anxiety mm -hmm. as a kid i would stand up i would go to the washroom <sighs> hyperventilate and i would come back in the service sit down again and then at the end of the service people would be saying hi and unfortunately, people saw it in the wrong way. They thought, this girl, she doesn't want to talk to us. She, doesn't, she has a bad attitude. But mm. really, I was just feeling like, you don't matter anyway. Mm. You know, you can mm. wait for someone to come talk to you. When they come talk to you, they're going to ask you, how's mom? How's dad? Have a good day. Put this in the car. You know? So I was just like, this is my story. To the point where I wanted to leave the church. Yeah. I, I wanted to leave the church. You remember that? Mm -hmm. no? I remember. So you were really living in the shadow of your parents, really. So yes. that's why it was hard for you to really even, you want to be in a place where you feel, not that you are not, that you felt embraced, you know. Embraced. It's yeah. important that we talk about stuff like that because yes. at least it can help somebody, not only in church, in any, any kind yeah, exactly. of a, a setting, relationship, that every person have a story that is different to what is perceived yes. from outside, you know. I remember when people used to tell you, oh, you're so blessed to have your parents, and used to bother you, you know yeah, what I'm saying? It did. Yeah, it really bothered It bothered you. me. It bothered me because sometimes, you know, you know, I would hear stuff like, you're so lucky, you know, mm -hmm. you have the best parents, oh, mm -hmm. you this, you this, and I'm like, do you know what I have to pay in order to live mm -hmm. in this life? Mm -hmm. Do you know my story? Do you know what goes on behind closed doors? You mm -hmm. don't know me. Mm -hmm. So how dare you come and tell me you're so lucky, you have it easy. Mm -hmm. You know, so that, that used to hurt me as a kid, and I would just, I would complain about it all the time. And, um, you know, Everyone has their own cross to carry. Mm -hmm. And it's not because I never spoke about it that I didn't have anything going on. I had my own things. So that used, that used to really... Yeah, and, and you me. know what? Having a brother with special needs, when you see people really wanting to know how is Amadou more than you too, that must be yes. really hard. Yes, yeah. and it may sound selfish. Mm -hmm. Oh, you should ask about your brother. Mm -hmm. and, but I wanted to be... Seen, and mind you, I was also a child. Mm -hmm. I was not an adult. Mm -hmm. If I was an adult, it would have been a different perspective. I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So when people came to me, the only thing they would ask me about is, how's mom? How's dad? Oh, how's Amadou? Mm -hmm. You know, I made me feel like, do they care? Do they ask about me too? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would complain. I'd be like, they, they think the only problem we have is Amadou. Mm -hmm. That's true. They, you feel often. like, oh, your life is so perfect, mm -hmm. but it's just Amadou, mm -hmm. but God's going to heal him. And I'm like, these are the problems that we talk about. Mm -hmm. My brother is a special needs, but do you know mm -hmm. the other crosses that we need to bear? So that as well was going through my mind. And mm -hmm. I was like, if you only knew, you mm -hmm. know, if you only knew, so. Yeah, yeah. so now in, moving forward for those who have children yeah. who are in the ministry leaders, how can they protect their children, number one? Number two, as a congregation, how can congregation, Congregation can help uh, mm -hmm. just give, I think, children of pastors or leaders, they need a little bit of more attention and yeah. appreciation. Yeah. I think as parents, like I said, something that helped me is that because at least I found acceptance at home. Mm -hmm. It would have been a, a whole nother story if at home too I was rejected and judged. I felt acceptance at home. So allow your children and mm -hmm. always encourage them. You know, the words that you speak are really going to carry them through those hard times. Mm -hmm. I wasn't hearing, you know, those words from outside. But when I came home, I heard almost every day, you're so special. You're so powerful. I didn't do anything, but they're telling me I'm powerful. 
you know, it doesn't make sense, but it goes straight into my spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, you're so beautiful. You're so, we, we care for you. Love you, love you, love you. In our house, everything is love you, love you. But this was so, so important. So parents keep on pouring out those words. And the second thing I want to say to parents who are maybe leaders, not only in the church, but in the secular world, you know, train your kids to have a voice. Mm -hmm. So one thing that could have helped me as a child is if I was able to respond back mm -hmm. in the right way. Mm -hmm. So because I was so emotional mm -hmm. and I didn't understand, the way I would respond was not right. I would just, it's either I would react wrongly, I would say like, what? Or I wouldn't say anything at all. So teach your children how to respond correctly mm -hmm. when those things happen because they will happen. So the goal is not to stop people from saying what they say. The goal is to train the kid to be resilient, to know how to respond with wisdom and to redirect the person in the right path. Mm. I noticed that every person that I confronted because, you know, there was times where I would be hurt and maybe my mom would give me advice. She would say, go talk to the person. So the next week I would sit down and say, you did this, this and that. I heard you because people sometimes would talk behind my back. I said, I heard you say this behind me. Why? And then me and that person would become best friends. And they would say, wow, Rafi, I really appreciate you coming to talk to me. Hmm. You're so amazing. I didn't hmm. know you were such an amazing person. Mm -hmm. So give your children a voice so that they can, you know, they can defend themselves when stuff like that happen. And maybe even create some great relationships mm -hmm. starting from there. Mm -hmm. And then for people in the church, yes. like, uh, how should they, you know, relate to relate. pastors' kids, re leaders' kids, you know? I think, on the contrary, they should have, be more encouraging, yeah. you know? I think the first thing, uh, maybe congregational members, understand that your pastor's children are separate human beings. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is for any leader. When we look at the, we look at, uh, the kids of maybe Obama, sometimes we put Obama and the child together. Mm -hmm. That's not right. Mm -hmm. So these God called these kids mm -hmm. separately as well. So mm -hmm. they're a separate human being. So when you have that in mind, you begin to relate to them by their name. Mm -hmm. You know, don't, you know, don't relate to them by the child of. Mm -hmm. Their value is not only found in who their parents are. Mm. They have value. They have the same way you would relate to another child. Relate to them that way. Mm -hmm. And um, understand, like everyone else, there's, you know, they go through stuff. And the difference between maybe us and other kids is that we can't always talk about the things we go through because we understand confidentiality mm -hmm. and we understand that my parents' ministry is not for me to go and babble about, you know? So understand that there's a load. There's mm -hmm. a load that comes with being a pastor's kid and we need to say the truth about it. Mm -hmm. So when you relate to them, relate with a little bit more compassion, mm -hmm. a little bit more ear, a little bit more care than you would because it's it's not an easy journey mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. the people around can definitely make a huge impact mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. and appreciating the pastor and appreciating. Kids, they share the majority yes. of your family's life and we didn't we them. didn't we didn't ask we didn't sign up for it <laughs> we were born into it this that's right they found so. themselves in the ministry just by blood yeah. and association association yeah and uh, you know I'm so glad we're having this conversation, baby, because I know it's helping people, all of us, to see things in a very different perspective, right? Yes. Yeah, so thank you for sharing your story. I know, you know, it hasn't always been easy for you, but you've always been somebody who's, you've never wanted to give trouble to anybody or anyone. You, you always wanted to make my life my your dad's life very easy even in the ministry i never remember any time in your life you, where you ever complained oh you're too much at church even when you got older mm -hmm. you know you were just i don't know you had a, a a very intimate relationship with your god i remember you had a even a vision when you were young i would like you to share mm -hmm. it before we go on our on our last part and go into questions because time is going yeah so Speaking of that, you know, encounter that I had, I was two years old, I think, and we were living in Airdrie. Mm -hmm. And you see, God, he visits people, unbelievers, mm -hmm. children, God's spirit, like he, it goes everywhere. It's not limited. So I was in my room one day and I was just hanging out in the afternoon. 
and I see this, I see Jesus, I see this huge light, mm -hmm. you know, and it's weird. The light didn't have a face, but I knew it was smiling at me. Mm -hmm. And I knew this light was so happy to mm -hmm. see me. Mm -hmm. So I was just, wow. And as a kid, I knew, hey, this is God visiting me on a regular afternoon. And he's so happy to see me. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, that was just my encounter. And it's weird because I saw it almost on the wall. Mm -hmm. But I felt the embrace. Mm -hmm. I felt this light was mm -hmm. hugging me, was so happy, was like tickling me. Mm -hmm. So me and this light were just smiling at each other even though this light didn't have a face and that was my first encounter with with god as a, a young girl and it's crazy because those little things you can never forget i was two years old but i remember it so clearly and i think that day i even went to you no no i remember you woke up and you're like mommy i saw jesus on the wall he yes. was smiling at me exactly it was so beautiful yeah baby. so those those little encounters they, I don't remember a day where I doubted the existence mm -hmm. of God ever. Mm -hmm. Even when I was in pain, even when I was mad, I never doubted mm -hmm. the existence of this mm -hmm. God that my parents are going to church to serve. Mm -hmm. So that's why I never had an issue with them doing it. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I remember you had one question that yes. even me, I couldn't even answer. <laughs> when you're, you're, I think you're in a process of trying to, you know, yeah. to find out the, the this God and you're yes. like God and you so she would ask me so I understand that God created us so who created God you know <laughs> and in a little young mind and you could go and you try to go yes. deep try to figure out yeah. all this thing and just to say hey I didn't have a formal answer to that just to no. say you know what <laughs> we need to allow our children to have questions yeah. about God not be afraid yes for them to ask questions because it's not a sign of unbelief Yes. It's a sign of trying to to grasp mm -hmm. the God of their yeah, parents, yeah. you know. We yeah. need to be careful as parents, you know. You know, sometimes as parents, people are afraid. They're afraid the kids, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to, this is unbelief or this mm -hmm. is, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Give them the, the, the capacity to even ask questions, mm -hmm. you know, to, to explore yeah. God in their own way. Yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so then, you know, I remember, you know, you're like, God, me, I'm done with this church. And it used really to be really painful <laughs> for me. I'm done with this church. And as a parent, as a pastor, I was in pain to see that my daughter, number one, is feeling rejected in the place where we have put our sweat, mm -hmm. our time, and, and our sacrifice yeah. in. And uh, to see her saying, I don't want to come to that church that church your church you know she decided to remove herself of that church that's your church i'm Sorry. not gonna be part of it you know and uh, you know not because you're mean just because it, it was a big struggle it was a struggle it was a big struggle so it was hard it was hard yeah. for me as a mom but you know i always pray and say god this is mm. your daughter too anyway so mm. i want to ask you a question about you finding God for yourself mm -hmm. because you're riding on your parents' faith, you're having your own revelations of this God in your own little ways, amen. And uh, you got to a place where you've been hurt, you know, by people, ministry, your expectations were not met, yeah. you know. Met. Can we talk about expectation just for ministry, for ministry's sake? Mm -hmm. sake. The expectations of others, or yeah, how do you deal with? expectation mm. wrong expectation mm -hmm. hurtful expectation mm -hmm. you know yeah so expectations it goes far beyond ministry even as a woman or a man you know as a man you have to do this 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 mm. this mm. this is the picture of the perfect man mm. this is the picture of the perfect past this is the picture so no matter who you are there is actually expectations almost assigned to you mm. in my case it was the expectation as the pastor's kid even though i didn't sign up for it mm -hmm. and there's good expectations there's expectations that you should have for any kid but there's also wrong expectations mm -hmm. so like I said earlier the important part is number one to have you know the spirit of discernment to not just take anything that comes but to be able to discern is this God is this not mm -hmm. number two have a voice mm -hmm. because people will sometimes put a tag on you 
And if you don't say anything, that tag is going to stay right there. Mm -hmm. You're not meeting this expectations. You need to be able to say, you know what? No, this, this is not for me. This is who I'm called to be. Mm -hmm. So to be able to counteract it. Mm -hmm. So like I said, train your kids to have that voice. Train your kids to be able to understand for themselves what is right from wrong. Um, but expectations, unfortunately or fortunately, they're always going to be there. Mm -hmm. So th there's not much you can mm -hmm. you can do about it. And how do you deal? This is so good. How do you deal with being hurt in the house of God, where you feel like that's the place where I could come and find yes. acceptance? Yes. But that's the very place where I'm getting hurt. I'm getting wounded. Exactly. And uh, you know what? Like, how do you deal with that as a Christian, not just as yeah. a PK? Yeah. What would you give a word of encouragement to somebody who's like, I don't want to be part of the church. I went there, I was hurt yes. and wounded and offended, yeah. you know? Like, how do you, can, how can you encourage somebody to overcome and yes. still go to receive the word of God? Yes. So what I was missing, and this is, I feel, you know, I feel like God is speaking right now. Mm -hmm. There's people mm. out there, some of you are watching right now, mm -hmm. and the reason you're even able mm -hmm. to leave the church mm -hmm. is because you haven't had a personal encounter. Mm. So yes, I had a story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love God, love my parents, but I didn't have an encounter. Mm. So me leaving the church was easy. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not finding acceptance here. I can go. Mm. So what made me come back? I think that's the answer to this question. Mm -hmm. What made me come back was the fact that I had a real, mm -hmm. personal, mm -hmm. deep, very, 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 very deep encounter. Mm -hmm. So I want to speak to somebody watching right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. What you need is mm -hmm. an encounter. Amen. You don't need your pastor to apologize mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. You don't need the leaders to apologize mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. You don't need, you know, the whole community board mm -hmm. to come and bring you back. Mm -hmm. You need an encounter. Hey, Jesus. You need an encounter. That's so right. tonight, I'm really happy that mm -hmm. you're watching this video because that encounter, you need to be enlightened, mm -hmm. all right? You're about to have that encounter. Mm -hmm. Stop looking in the wrong places. Mm -hmm. Stop trying to, you know, discuss with mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. what went wrong, what I couldn't, you need an encounter. Mm -hmm. So what made me come back, you know, the encounter didn't come all happy jolly. Mm -hmm. I had to go down, mm -hmm. you know, I had to go deep into a pit mm -hmm. of, you know, I would say just depression mm -hmm. and problems and problems. Mm -hmm. And I want to speak to some parents. Mm -hmm. You do not stop your children from encountering problems. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes and most of the time, God is using that problem mm -hmm. for a divine visitation mm -hmm. and um, encounter with them. And shape them. Mm -hmm. So sometimes as parents, even me as a big sister, it's like you don't want your children to feel any kind of pain. Mm -hmm. You don't want them to go through anything. You mm -hmm. want to protect them mm -hmm. too much. Shield them. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you're stopping the work of God mm -hmm. because he wants to encounter them there. Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody who God encountered in a time of jubilee. Mm -hmm. He always encountered them in a dark place in solitude sometimes mm -hmm. god doesn't encounter an individual in a crowd he encounters an individual in the secret place mm -hmm. so what happened i think around 16 years old mm -hmm. hell 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 broke loose in my life mm -hmm. and that's a whole nother testimony mm -hmm. that i'm going to share in a few years mm -hmm. but i had back-to-back -back events pop 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 mm -hmm. hell was breaking loose mm -hmm. in my life and on top of that, you know, not only in my life, in my family's life, mm -hmm. in my church's life, mm -hmm. we lost two important people mm -hmm. to suicide mm -hmm. within the same two weeks, mm -hmm. you know? So the whole church was a mud, you know, day. Mm -hmm. We were grieving. Mm -hmm. And I was also grieving my own personal issues. Mm -hmm. So I went so deep down in the pit that all of a sudden I'm like, okay, so what do I do now? Mm -hmm. What am I going to do? So, this brings me back to pure indoctrination. Mm -hmm. I say, okay, so when my family is going through trouble, what did they do? And I have an image of my mom in her basement, Hillsong, or watching T.D. Jakes, crying. So I said, you know what, I'm going to try it. I lost everything already. Mm -hmm. I have nothing. I have nothing. My hands are wiped clean. So let me try this thing. Mm -hmm. I went on YouTube for the first time in my life by myself, you know. And okay, Hillsong music. And I'm like, okay, let me do what my mom did now. Let me cry. Mm -hmm. And I cried and I cried and I was, oh, it was just a horrible moment. Mm -hmm. And I really thank God for that season in my life 
though I never want to live it again, mm -hmm. it was the it, it was like a turning point. Mm -hmm. It's when everything switched. Mm -hmm. Most people, when they look at me, they think that my life changed when I moved to Montreal, which is not true. Mm -hmm. That was the manifestation of what had happened when I was alone. Mm -hmm. You know? Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Go so I was alone in isolation mm -hmm. with me and this God that they were talking about. Mm -hmm. And that's where mm -hmm. God met me. And not only me, there was like almost a revival in mm -hmm. my church at mm -hmm. a certain point. Mm -hmm. And then one jolly day, because mm -hmm. I had already received Christ in my heart. Mm -hmm. I did the, the salvation prayer like 50 times mm -hmm. when I was young because I'm like, did it work? Did it work? So I, had already, I was already saved. Mm -hmm. I was already born again. But I had never encountered the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So you need the Holy Spirit because some of you people are just religious. You know Jesus in the books, but you don't know the one that he sent, mm. the mighty counselor, the Holy mm, Ghost. Mm, oh my God, I feel like mm, I'm going to speak it. in tongues right now. Rabbi. So, mm -hmm. one day my dad, he's like, let's go to a leadership meeting. Mm. But because I was so mad at the church, because mm -hmm. before I was a kid, okay, let's go. But now I was mad. I was, no. He said, let's go to a leadership, my dad. And I was like, I don't. I don't really want to go. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm already depressed. Mm -hmm. What am I going to... I'm not even a leader in the church. Leadership meaning for what? And mm -hmm. he's like, you need to be there today. And that was the first time my dad ever kind of pushed me to go somewhere I didn't want to. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, you know. And I was, you know, a kid who listens to her parents. Mm -hmm. So I went. And mm -hmm. I was sitting there in the leadership like this, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> not talking. I'm like, I'm waiting for this meeting to be over. Like they do go. their mm -hmm. Holy Ghost tongues mm -hmm. and we go home. I'm done, 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 done. Mm. And it was a leadership meeting, maybe like 12 people. Yeah, it was about the prophetic. It yeah. was about, uh huh. It was about the prophetic. Mm -hmm. My God. Yes. So now the meeting is ending. I didn't listen to nothing that my dad said. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry, dad. I didn't listen to nothing. So the ending came now, and it was time to operate in the prophetic now. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what is, first of all, I didn't even really know Sequesi's affair. Mm -hmm. So my mom now, she's on her knees, mm -hmm. as usual. My mom, like, when she's in Holy Ghost, she's crazy. <laughs> so she starts doing some, some stuff, you know? But for me, it was nothing different. Mm -hmm. It was just, okay, she's in the Holy Ghost. But that day now, mm. I felt like... Let me go rub my mom's back because mm -hmm. she's really crying. Mm -hmm. So I went behind her and I started to do this. I was birthing something. I she was that. birthing. She mm -hmm. was huh, like mm -hmm. doing some weird stuff. Mm -hmm. So I come and I touch her on the back. Five seconds. I said five seconds. Rafi, she's on the floor. Mm -hmm. Not only is she on the floor, some weird stuff are mm -hmm. coming out of her mouth. Mm -hmm. I was... It's, it was like a tangible feeling mm -hmm. where something is coming out. I was like birthing out something crazy. Mm -hmm. This was that was a, that was a crazy day. Mm -hmm. And everyone in the leadership meeting, mm -hmm. because they knew Rafi, they're like, "What is? She, that's not her. What is she doing?" Mm -hmm. And I don't know how long we were on the floor, my mm -hmm. mom and I. But do you know what? Screaming. The Holy Ghost feed us. And yeah. it was almost painful because it was so physical. Mm -hmm. So that was my first. I would say encounter with the Holy Spirit. I think the week before that, I mm -hmm. spoke in tongues by myself. Mm -hmm. I was just there trying to speak in tongues and it started happening. Mm -hmm. But that day was something abnormal for me. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this is happening to me. I thought it could only happen to them mm -hmm. who are very spiritual. Mm -hmm. And I was going for it. I was so embarrassed. Mm -hmm. I took my jacket. I was hiding myself. I'm like, why? This meeting, this is why I came to this meeting. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. So the whole night we started dancing, Holy Ghost mm -hmm. dancing mm -hmm. with no music, some crazy prophetic stuff mm -hmm. that I didn't really understand. But that day we went in the car. Mm -hmm. They were laughing at me because they never saw me like that. But I was laughing because all the pain, mm -hmm. I can even cry mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. <sighs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus. All the pain, mm -hmm. all the pain that I had been feeling mm -hmm. for that year, it was, it was Lift gone. It off. Mm -hmm. And I felt like this Holy Ghost person, this is the real me. Mm. So I'm not, a, I'm not a fleshly person. Mm -hmm. This body can go through different tribulations, mm -hmm. but I feel like I'm the real me right now. Mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus. <sighs> and I laughed. And I was smiling, laughing at myself, but I felt for the first time like a real, sincere joy. Mm -hmm. 
all you need mm -hmm. is an encounter Hallelujah. with mm. God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. And it's like something that should have taken, you know, mm -hmm. years to fix. Mm -hmm. It's like in one evening, everything was... I felt... Oh. I don't know how to explain in human words because this is not fleshly stuff. Mm -hmm. But I felt like this is the me mm -hmm. that I'm going to be when I go to heaven one day. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. spirit, Rafi, mm -hmm. is alive right now. I'm alive, yes. And the rest is history. Mm -hmm. After that, we started having, um, going on, on retreats, they, you know, called encounter. And I started going and each encounter, mm -hmm. it was like something new. Mm -hmm. And I was in that season. Mm -hmm. Those who were with me can testify. I was really in the prophetic. Mm -hmm. And it was crazy because mm -hmm. this kid, she doesn't even know the Bible. Mm -hmm. She doesn't, she hasn't, you know, what does she know? Mm -hmm. But when the Holy Ghost comes upon somebody, mm -hmm. it's like the time is redeemed. Mm -hmm. Time is redeemed. Amen. And you start to prophesy and you start to do crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you become the, the real you. I don't know if you can really you understand. You came alive. You came yeah. alive. And that pain, it's like I thank God for that pain. Mm -hmm. Because if, if I didn't go down like mm -hmm. that, I wouldn't have been able because... God operates, you know, he wants you to be thirsty for him, right? So if that hunger and that thirst is not there, you know, he won't impose himself. Mm -hmm. But he waited till I called God, please do something. Mm -hmm. And when I said do something, I thought it would be change my problems. He didn't change my mm -hmm. problem. In fact, more problems mm -hmm. came. Mm -hmm. But he gave me just he gave me just the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So now when you when Ghost. you see me speaking in tongues, know that my life depends mm -hmm, mm -hmm, on it mm -hmm, that's what mm -hmm, took mm -hmm, me out mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. all you Hallelujah. need is an encounter mm -hmm. church hurt mm -hmm. you made you know people who deal with church hurt mm -hmm. i'm even talking to myself mm -hmm. sometimes we think the problem is with people mm -hmm. the problem is not with people you know you think you can oh let me fight let me fight all you need is an encounter mm -hmm. when you have an encounter you're going to be willing to serve the same people that hurt you mm -hmm. really bad Mm. How do you think Jesus Christ mm. was able to, you know, give his life and mm. to serve humanity, mm. serve a humanity? The Bible says that he knew their hearts. That's mm -hmm. what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. He knows the heart of man, mm. yet mm. he was able to serve humanity. Mm. How? Mm. How is that possible? Mm. You know, because he knew, he knew what, mm. what he was sent to do. Mm. And if it wasn't for that encounter, I wouldn't be able, mm. you know, even up to now, because... It, you know, sometimes we, we think of a testimony of mm. this was this, now it's done. Mm. It's not done. Mm. I, I still, you know, struggle. Mm. I still fight, mm -hmm. not only as a pastor's kid, but now as somebody who serves God. And when you begin to serve God, there's many things that come with it on top of that. Mm. You become a threat to the enemy. Mm -hmm. And I've been hurt uh, even more times by people that I, I serve God with. Mm. But what keeps me standing is the encounter. Mm. I go all the way back to that encounter and I say, no, I know the God mm. in whom I, I believe. It's not only now the God of my fathers, mm. it's my God mm. and my relationship. Mm. 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 And mm. there's not a day that I mm. doubt whether mm. I'm doing the right thing mm. or not. Mm. Mm. Because I know what it is. Mm. I know what it is to have mm. an encounter. And this may pass over your mm. head mm. because it's spiritual matters. But I pray that you have that mm. experience mm. as well. He touched you. Yeah. Mm. He, he, touched he, did. You. he touched you. He touched you. He did. He really did. Mm. Ah, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I know there's a lot we could talk about, but uh, we want to answer questions. But before we do, I want to point out something. Even through all this stuff, you had an encounter. And you started growing strongly and spiritually. But still... At one point, because at that point, God asked me to move to, to Montreal. Montreal to start a church. Yes. And uh, I remember we moved. <gasps> and uh, when we got there, <laughs> what did tell you them, tell me? Tell them. No, you need to tell them. No, no, you, you do it better. <laughs> I remember when we moved to Montreal, just to say how you can be, the Holy Ghost can impact you. And if you are not careful, those hurts yes. can come between what God is doing. Yes you know and uh what god is doing in you mm -hmm. so with that we gotta make sure we take care of 
the hurts yes, and the wounds yes, in our yes, hearts, yes, yes. right? I remember when I moved to Montreal to start a church, I remember the first day we got there, maybe two, three days after we finished yeah. moving, I remember my daughter come to me, she's like, Mom, I'm not coming to your church. Yeah. I'm not going to your church in, in Montreal. And, uh, and she was so serious because of the, 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 the struggle you had in here in Calgary, you were like, I am not going to have that same yes. struggle in Montreal. And, then, and she said, I'm not going to come to your church. I said, it's all right. Yeah. Uh, just find the church and I'll drive you as long as you're going to church. Do you want to talk about that state, that yeah. stage where you are in? Yeah. So just to go back a little bit, mm. um, I actually mm. had planned to move to Montreal by myself. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to move not only because I loved the city, but mm -hmm. because I wanted to run away. Mm -hmm. So even before God spoke to her to move, I was ready. I'm like, I'm moving. I'm turning 18. Um, I'm done with high school. So I'm going to go start my life mm -hmm. over there alone. Mm -hmm. So then, <laughs> but I need to say something yeah. though, because the pull was from the Holy Ghost. The way you are interpreted in your head was, I'm trying to run away. But I believe God had put yes. in you in your heart. You exactly. knew you had to be exactly. in Montreal. And I can confirm that because mm -hmm. even the people we moved with, my Uncle Eve, I always told him, we're going to move to Montreal mm -hmm. together. And he didn't believe me. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was my own desire, but mm -hmm. it was Holy Spirit mm -hmm. shifting me. So in my head, I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm running away. But even my spirit knew, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't know we we're going to start a church, but my spirit knew that God was really pushing me there. Mm -hmm. So then I moved there and after I had that encounter and I felt like now I have my own mm. relationship. So now let me start a new life. Fresh, God for myself. fresh, fresh, mm -hmm. fresh. I'll find a good church. Nobody knows me and I'm going to serve and blah, blah, blah. And I was so excited for that. So then my mom, you know, we ended up moving together with her and, and a team. And I told her, you know what, I'm not coming just to, I said, just to let you know, mm -hmm. that's how I said it. Mm -hmm. I was so rude. Just to let you know, I'm not coming to your church. So yes, I'm happy for you. I'll support you, but that will not be the church I'm attending. I'll mm -hmm. come to the opening. She said, at least come to the opening of my church. I said, fine, I'll come to the opening of your church. But after that, I'm going to look for a white people's church because I'm tired of black people. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of you. That's how you talk, which is you know, not it. So I'm like, I'm going to find my own church. And I told her, and thank you, mom, for not judging me. And thank you for allowing me. You know, she actually helped me to find a church of my own. So we literally went to other churches together. And I'm sitting in that church. As much as I wanted to be in a different church, I was sitting there. I'm like, this is so cold. You know, when you have an encounter, now all you want is that. <laughs> all you want is that because it's so addicting. Yeah. I'm like, this is so boring. Like, I can't help it, but I'm not going to admit it. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to pretend, oh, this is not the church. I'm going to try another one. And, and then we'll say, okay, which one do you want to try? Yes. And we'll drop her to another church. And then it wouldn't work for her. <laughs> yeah. And this was even before she opened the church. This mm -hmm. is when we just moved. <laughs> So then what happened? How did you finally oh, decide? God. I'm still trying to figure out that, uh, that thing. But thank you. Thank you again, because you need to let your kids ask themselves questions. Because if she didn't allow me to go look for my own church, I would be bitter and I'd be like, I need to find it. And I was going to rebel mm -hmm. and I was going to find it myself. So the fact that she stood with me and said, OK, let's go look together. We went together and she let me for myself mm -hmm. decide that I don't want to go to these churches. So she let me have my journey only for me to come back and be like, okay, I'm going to come to your church. I came to the opening. I even was singing that day. Okay. But you know, in my head, I'm like, I'm still going to go. I'm still going to go. They don't know, but I'm going to leave. Next thing you know, I'm there. There's the intercession. <laughs> Next thing you know, Sunday I'm there again. So, the rest is history. I just ended up being there and everyone is like, oh, Rafi, you changed. But they didn't know that it started since. It mm -hmm. started when I was in the pit. Mm -hmm. So God will encounter someone in the secret and then they'll just, he'll just expose them mm -hmm. at the right time. Mm -hmm. And I started mm -hmm. to serve at my church 
And I want to encourage people to serve because if you're not serving, mm. you're dying, mm. you know? So I started to contribute something and I started to realize, oh, I like this thing. And God starts manifesting things that were already inside, you know? You think they're new and to the people outside, they think that, you know, it's always, but it's been hidden inside. Mm. And uh, mm. thank you for giving me a space mm. to find God, to find what I want to do and to begin to serve. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more I serve, the more I contribute, the more God built me. Mm -hmm. And the more he gave me love for people mm -hmm. at church, mm -hmm. the more he helped me, you know, to embrace people mm -hmm. and not to be bitter towards them. I started to have the heart of Christ mm -hmm. just through service. Mm -hmm. So through service. Any, anyone that's not giving, um, you know, you're dying. So mm -hmm. in this life, it's about exchange. Mm -hmm. So that's how I ended up, you know, staying in my mom's church mm -hmm. and... <laughs> actually enjoying and loving it so much there's mm -hmm. nothing that i'm more grateful mm -hmm. than nouvelle espoir mm -hmm. not because it's happy go lucky easy but because god changed my heart through an encounter and then you found you, you found your purpose too you you enter into your yeah. purpose and you accepted it and that's going to be for another day because mm -hmm. it's a very important subject so we want to answer a few questions, questions. before questions. we end and then we're going to do this again. Isn't she amazing? Powerful, powerful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we're going to answer a few questions for... Send them in the comments here. Okay. And uh, I'll be able to answer to the best of my ability. All right. All right. Yeah. So, and then, and you know, I, I want to speak to, to mm -hmm. parents. I think one of the greatest thing I think that, that helped me, you know, to hear my own daughter saying, I'm not going to your church. Uh, it wasn't easy in a huge city like Montreal. Yeah. I write questions. I'm waiting for questions then I'm, I'm, yeah. as I'm speaking. So I remember whenever you tell me, I'm not coming to your church in my head. And I'll say, you know what? Go find your God by yourself. Yeah. I think you were trying to find God mm -hmm. apart from your pastor's parents. Yeah, exactly. Find God, find your calling, find the direction yeah. of your life apart from yeah. us, you know what I'm saying? You're trying to find your whole new person by yourself. Yes. And I'm so grateful to God because when you mm. seek, you find. Yes. And when you seek yes. with all your heart, you will find, mm. amen? So I just wanna encourage us as, as Christian, as parents, whoever we are, you know, do not be afraid to, to go seek. To seek, yeah. It's in seeking that you find, mm -hmm. you know? And, uh, but I remember I would go in my room, I'm like, God, you brought me in this city, my daughter in this crazy city, for her to go on her way in the city that I don't even know. But I said, but I trust you, God. I trust you. I didn't know how yeah. God would change your heart. But yeah. he, 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 he did it. So as a parent, just keep doing, mm -hmm. keep serving. Do what you know mm -hmm. needs to be done uh, to your God, to your service to God. And God will take care of our children. Mm -hmm. You, you brought up a very powerful point. Allow your kids to get to know God, to go through mm -hmm. hard situations so that they can meet the God that you yeah. have taught them. Amen? Yes. So Great. how do you separate ministry? No, this, as a, this okay. one first. The first question is, everyone is not blessed with an encounter. What would you recommend for someone who is looking to have that kind of relationship with God? So I love you too. That's a great, great, great question. Um, the first thing you need to know is that an encounter is for everybody. Mm. The, the Bible is really clear. And mm -hmm. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Mm -hmm. You know, God, all he's looking is for you. You're in the right spot because mm -hmm. first you're seeking and mm. you want it deep inside. Mm. What allowed God, you know, to bring me to that place where he met me is number one, I had to go through my own troubles. Mm. So when I got to the place where I had nothing left, but this God that I don't know yet, I really prayed. And I mm -hmm. sometimes prayer is not praying, God, da, da, da. sometimes it's crying. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're, you have no words that your spirit begins to groan. That's right. So th through that groaning, through that expression, you begin to call upon God and you're like, I need, I need to meet this. I need to know, I need a hope. Where are you? You know, sometimes you need to ask yourself questions like that. Where are you? Where is this God? And if you seek, surely you're gonna find mm -hmm. you know you need to have that hunger and that thirst mm -hmm. and to understand that it's for you it's mm -hmm. not for this more spiritual mm -hmm. it's not for the most intelligent it's for you 
You, you, you. Because when I looked for that, I didn't have anything. Mm. Number two, be in the right environment. Mm. How did I... You know, my dad says this often. Sometimes you need to be at a certain place, mm. you know? I didn't want to go to that prayer meeting, to that leadership meeting, because mm. I was not a leader, and I didn't want to be in church. Mm -hmm. But my dad pushed me. He said, you need to be at this meeting. Mm. God had a meeting with... An encounter is a meeting. Mm. He had a rendezvous with mm. me at church. Mm. He didn't want to meet me alone in my room anymore. He wanted to meet me at church, not on a Sunday, on this leadership meeting. So be at the right place and at the right time. Do you understand? So when you hear those cues... When, you know, when my dad pushed me, I should have responded right away, you know, but I was resisting. Mm. If I had resisted too much, I would have missed out on that opportunity. Mm, mm. So be with the right people, mm. be in the house of God, mm. be surrounded with people who are going to take you there and God will surely meet you. Mm -hmm. And you can have that special experience. Mm -hmm. You can definitely have it. And mm -hmm. my wish is that you have it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you want to uh, add something. Yeah, I want to add something about an encounter I had. Yes. And I like what you say you need to be. I think you need to be open too. You mm -hmm. need to be open. Because sometimes we want an encounter a certain way. Yes. I want God to visit me in my bedroom. I want God to visit me this way. I, wanna, I don't want God mm -hmm. to make me look mm -hmm. crazy. Like he did for you. For you, he made you look he crazy. He made me look crazy. You know? So, we don't get to define how we want the encounter. Uh -huh. Our hearts and our hunger define how God comes. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, yeah. draw near to me and I will draw near to you. So, wherever you are, you may say, but I don't have parents like yours. But, you know, you have a God who mm -hmm. hears the prayers, the deep, the depths the deep prayers mm -hmm. of those who are looking for this encounter. Even now, you can say, God, I want an encounter, encounter. with you. God, please come and impact me so that yes. I can have that switch, switch in yeah. my spirit. Wherever you are, God will come. I remember I had an encounter. I had an encounter at 3 a.m. in the morning in my bedroom by myself because I had a yearning and a desire to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. uh, at church, it never worked. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, with other pastors praying for me, it didn't work. Until one day at night, mm -hmm. at night at one in the morning, I'm just reading my Bible. You see, I like the, when you say environment. Environment, it could be you reading your Bible. It could be listen to the Word of God. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Your hunger should lead you to go towards mm -hmm. the, things the things that can provoke and hunger. Prayer, mm -hmm. meditation, mm -hmm. worship, reading the Word of God. I had an encounter when I was reading the Word of God. I Rafi was a baby. You know, I couldn't sleep. And I won in the morning. I went and started reading the book of Acts. And as I was reading the book of Acts, how the Holy Ghost came, mm. I had an encounter. So I was reading the Bible and God started to bring a hunger mm -hmm. and faith and belief for it. Atmosphere is very Atmosphere. important because I was reading the word of God. God put Rema power yeah, yeah, on yeah. those words I was reading that created a hunger and a yearning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had given up. I say it will never happen to me, mm -hmm. this thing of being filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. But as I was reading, so I created a space yeah. uh, and, 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 and for God to yeah, come yeah, and yeah, work yeah. for me. And I was reading the word of God and I saw how the Holy Ghost came. Mm -hmm. And then that word became life to me. Yeah. And I said, God, the same way. You came upon the disciple and the 3,000 that were there. Mm -hmm. Do the same for me. Yeah. And uh, because, and I pushed it, I said, I won't leave this place until you do it. And I had an encounter with the Holy Ghost, you know. So God knows which wow. encounter he wants to give you. And my life turned around. Yeah. So the Holy Ghost is ready and available for whoever yes. who will believe and who desire. Wow. He loves us wow. too much. Wow. And sometimes he will create opportunity so you can have that hunger. I'm praying that these words that you heard from my daughter will provoke hunger, provoke desire, 
brought up a yearning inside of you yes. to want to have that encounter. And you shall have yeah. it because God is faithful. He's yes. not a man that you should lie yes. or the son of man that you should change his mind. Yes. If you seek, you will find yeah. and just be willing mm -hmm. and he'll come to you mm -hmm. at his time. Amen. And, and I like just to, before we, I like what you said. I won't leave here until you do it. Mm. You don't need to literally say the same thing, but mm -hmm. be persistent. Mm. Just think of it as maybe a guy who's chasing after a lady. Mm. He, he wants to date her. It's not one time, oh, I want to date you. The first time she rejects him, mm. he lets go. He has to be persistent. He has to pursue. Mm. So think of it as a pursuit. Mm. You're chasing after this God. Mm. And the more you run, mm. you know, you, you become, that hunger comes, th mm. that hunger comes, that love comes. And finally, he'll say, mm. you know what? You've ran enough. I will meet you here. Mm. So be persistent. Mm. Don't give up on the first mm. try. Mm. Keep seeking and mm. keep creating mm. those mm. atmospheres mm. and being around people who can mm. help you create those mm. atmospheres. Mm. Can I can I add to yep. that? You know, one of the thing is uh, I love God because God He works with what you love. Uh, mm. Because I love worship, I grew up just mm. listening to worship all the time, and because i did that sometimes just put worship for the sake of putting it mm -hmm. and i'll just be doing my thing and right there an encounter yeah. with the holy ghost from nowhere i'm not focused on seeking god i'm just in an atmosphere, atmosphere. when i'm listening to worship cleaning taking mm -hmm. care of amadou running after the kids and right there an encounter would come with the holy ghost mm -hmm. because i created a space without mm -hmm. knowing and a word or song would yeah. be alive to me, and I'll start worshiping, and then right there, I would have an encounter mm, with God. We can so have an powerful. encounter with God every day if yes. you want it. Because God says, you know, if a father, you ask for father for a bread, yeah. will he give you a stone? Mm -hmm. How much more does he want to fill us with the Holy, Holy Ghost? Ghost? He want to fill us with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Next. I think this one is for you. Uh, How let, let's go with yours first. Okay. So... Okay, what would you advise a person who does not want to go to any church anymore mm -hmm. because they were hurt? Mm. Um, so here's my advice. This is what works for me. Mm. Um, yes, I had my encounter, but even in the, you know, when I went through other things, even in my life in Montreal, I understood that me going to church, number one, my life depends on it. Mm. Without this church thing, Rafi doesn't exist mm. anymore. Mm. So I'm not only, now I'm not going to church because I'm happy or mad. I'm going to church because I need it. Mm. So the moment church becomes an option for you, mm. you become really a victim to, mm. be, for, to the devil. Mm. Because mm. anything he throws at you, now you have a choice. Am I going? And I'm not. Mm. If I look at my life, mm -hmm. I think I've missed church in my life in Quebec. Mm -hmm. I missed church maybe one time. And I think I was not even in the city. So mm -hmm. no matter what happens, even if my leg is broken, I'd rather die in the church mm -hmm. because my life depends on it. Mm -hmm. So whoever you are hurt not wanting to go to church, remove from your mind that going to church is an option mm. and say, I need this church. Mm. Even if I go in and I don't want to talk to anyone, I'm not going for people, I'm going for God. Mm. And my issue as a young person was that I wasn't able to separate God and mm. people. Mm. God We're and dead. people. God That's and powerful. people. God and the people in the church are two different mm. things. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. So you need to start to ask yourself, why do I go to church now? Mm. Mm. When mm. I wake up to go to church, am mm. I going to see people? Mm. Or am I going to meet God? Mm. When we first moved to Montreal, our church was empty. Mm -hmm. But yet, I still put my makeup, I still put on my heels because mm. I'm going to encounter God. Mm. So you need, to, you need to really ask yourself, what is the motivation of me going to church? What brought me to church in the first place? Mm. And whatever brought you to church in the first place, lean on that. Mm. So mm. that whatever happens around you, mm. your, your people are still going to see you there every mm. Sunday. Mm. So mm. that's my advice for whoever you are who's hurt, mm. who doesn't want to go to church. Mm, mm, mm. Do you have something? You know, that? I mean, you know, we can go on for so much for this part. I can remember how many things I've done because I wanted when it came mm. to God. Everything I did, I, I like what you said. You say when it becomes an option, yes, you know, then you leave room to the enemy to open that door. But mm. when you know that going to hear the word of God, be in a place of congregation, not forsaking. The gathering as the yes. Bible speak yep, it out. Yep. When the Bible, God encourages you not to forsake the assembling mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. When you, you go 
by obedience to the word obedience. of God. Obedience. Obedience. You know, yeah. it's not anymore about people. It's about the word of God being yep. imparted in you. Yeah. And uh, doing what God is asking yeah. you to do. You know, Christianity is not about you and people. It's about you and your God. Exactly. And doing what God is asking you to do. Yeah. Right? Yes. And, uh, and, and serve. And serve. Because yes. the enemy wants to take the body of Christ out of service. But the Bible said Jesus came to serve. And he, he encourages to be like Jesus. Serve. Service heals. Mm. Service restores. Yeah. Service gives you a purpose. Yeah. Service makes you see beyond mm -hmm. people. Mm. So, you know, I just want to encourage yeah, you. Yeah. Give it a chance to, and let God meet you yeah. from that place. And this question is kind of in alignment. It said, what advice would you give to someone who is hurt by someone in the church, but they are in a position where they have to keep serving that mm -hmm. person as a ministry? Mm. So... Thankfully for me, it was a little bit easier because I grew up as a pastor's kid. I saw people betraying my parents mm -hmm. normally. So for me, it was hard, but I was able to cope with it. Mm -hmm. um, but what's important is that you must guard your heart. Mm -hmm. Guard your heart very preciously, especially when you are in a position where you need to serve them. Because out of the heart flows the things of life. Mm -hmm. So whatever you begin to speak... You know, this is another topic, but sometimes, let's say you're a minister. Mm. Sometimes you can be preaching, but because you're so angry at someone, you mm. begin to speak out of anger, mm. uh, which is horrible to the Holy Ghost, mm. and the Holy Ghost doesn't mm. like it. Mm. So my tip for that person would be guard your heart. Mm. It's not going to be easy, but that's the number one thing you need to do. Mm. What else besides guarding your heart? Ask God to give you, obviously, to heal you and to restore you but to give you a special compassion for mm. those people and a special love for those people mm. so that when you see them, you no longer see them for, you know, maybe their failures, mm. but you see them as someone in need. So you're able to actually give your best to mm. those people mm -hmm. so that the people who hurt you, they end up being the people you love the most. Mm. So mm. don't try to fix it with them, whatever, fix it with your heart mm. first mm. and everything else will come into play. Mm. Mm. And you know, I mean, if you're in a place where you can speak it up, I mean, one of the greatest things to, to remove the power of pain off of your heart is to speak it out, is to approach mm. the person if they are willing or open yes. to listen to you, to, you know, to tell them mm -hmm. where you've been hurt and be open. Because and, it's yeah. not about being right or wrong. And it's they about, may not, they mm -hmm. may not even apologize and be ready for that. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm sorry to cut Go you. Go for it. But the, what my mom is saying here is important. Mm -hmm. The importance is not the reaction of them. Mm -hmm. The importance is mm -hmm. being able to voice it. Mm -hmm. So because yes. because when you voice it, you you remove the power off of it. Yes. You know when a hurt is inside and stayed there, and you don't talk about it, it's a very dangerous thing because dangerous. it becomes a poison a poison bitterness is a poison yeah. hurt when it's not dealt with it becomes bitterness and bitterness become poison yes and when the bible said bitterness it's a poison he mm. said watch out that you do not have a root of bitterness mm. that poisons everything around yeah. you so you arise you being hurt and you finding freedom has nothing to do with anybody exactly who hurt you. it's about not allowing the pain mm. The hurt to become a poison mm -hmm. in your heart because then it distract it destroys the whole body. Yes. We're gonna pray for you at the end for yeah. that. For God to give you courage. Number one. Number yeah. two, if people are not willing or you feel like they are not open, you know what? Service comes in different place and different shape. If you get in a place where you're not able, find a different place to serve, but allow heart. God to heal you, to restore your heart. Allow God to show you the perspective. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes perspective is the killer. When perspective is all about you, mm -hmm. it becomes yeah. very dangerous. But when you allow God to give you his perspective mm -hmm. on anything, it becomes easier to overcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so good, guys. Okay. Next, you mm -hmm. mentioned that expectations will always be there. And most of the time, they come from people who do it without bad intention. Mm. But it's very hurtful. So how should we avoid being hurt? Mm. That's a really, really good question. Mm. Um, you said it yourself. You know, they're always going to be there. Now the key is, how, does, how do you stop those expectations from hurting you? Mm. Um, my question to you is, when those, you know, maybe someone imposes an expectation on you, what do you do about it? Mm. I want to go back to guard your heart. Mm. Guarding your heart is not only praying 
God, I pray it doesn't hurt me. Sometimes mm. guarding your heart is challenging a word that may come your way. Mm. When a word comes towards you that you know doesn't align with you, you need to challenge it. Mm. You need to say, where is that coming from? Mm. What do you mean? So be able to actually have a conversation. And not only that, be able to redirect the person in the right place because most people who, who react certain ways, they're doing it out of ignorance. Mm. So be able to redirect that person in the other way and say, no, this is who I am. This is my responsibility. Have a voice. That's, I think that's the most, what I can tell you about expectations. Mm, mm, Have mm, a voice. Mm, mm, because an expectation is like a voice. Mm. It's telling you, you are a black woman. This is what you can do. Mm. You need to have a voice too and act accordingly. Mm -hmm. So don't sit there and, and you know cry and whatever. Talk about it. Mm. Challenge it. Discuss about it. And change the course. Mm. I don't mm. know if, the, if mm. that's making mm. sense for mm. you. Mm. Mm. That's something to add about. You know, I, I was sharing it yesterday mm -hmm. on our Bible study. Every time somebody hurt me, rightfully or not rightfully, that's not the point. The point is, you are hurt. Yes. Uh, I always go to God to heal my hurt. Mm. Because, like you said, the Bible said, guard your heart. Because out of it comes every issue of life. Mm. So God didn't say, Rafi, guard your mom's heart. Mm -hmm. God didn't speak to me to say, mom, guard your daughter's heart. He said, guard your own heart. Yeah. Because out of it comes every issue of life. Which means what? When you get hurt, the first thing is, how do I guard my heart? Yeah. I need to go to God to remove, to heal, to empower me so I don't leave it there because yes. every issue of the, the heart comes from there, mm -hmm. right? So when you remove your eyes from the person who hurt you to how you need to mm -hmm. guard your heart, mm -hmm. it becomes even easier to overcome every mm -hmm. challenges. And, you know, and sometimes God takes time, you know. It takes time to heal the heart, to heal the wound. So be patient with, your, with you and, and know that the Holy Ghost is with you. And he's yes. going to comfort you and restore you so that you can comfort others. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, this question I want you to answer. It says, what is your advice to people who move from church to another church? So I'm guessing someone who was in a church who decided to, to leave and go to another church. What is your advice to them? That's for you. Oh, that's for me? Yeah. I mean, I'm just going to compare it to a root. When a root is not planted, it has to go deep. And for it to go deep, it takes time. It takes it take, uh, time for the root to be planted deeper so it can start to bear fruit. Mm -hmm. The thing is with church hopping, it's like taking your roots, <laughs> planting it there. After a year, boom, remove it, go to another one, remove it, go to another one. And you, you realize you don't, you don't make, you don't have roots. You are not rooted. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it becomes hard to have fruits. Amen. Mm -hmm. I would like to encourage that person who is church hopping. I tell you, I stayed in the church that I didn't want to be in. That's true. There was nothing about the church I grew up in that I wanted. Mm -hmm. I remember I used to go every Sunday. I hate this church. I don't know why I'm in this church. You know, but because I was willing to obey God. The first few mm -hmm. Sundays I told God me, I'm not going to be in this church. I don't like it. But because I was willing to do the will of God, I asked God, God, is this where you want me to be? And mm -hmm. he, he didn't answer me, but I kept going until mm -hmm. one day God spoke to me. He said, this is your church, really tough. This is your church. Stay there. Yeah. I'm going to raise you up in this church. So there was wow. no choice of church hopping. When you obey God, God will speak to you. True. It's really all about obedience and willing to do the will of God. I, I grew up in God knowing that I don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. I'm here to do <laughs> what God is asking me to do. And God will not let you hop church one after the other because God wants to be fruitful and productive in your life. So make up your mind and decide, I'm going to do what God wants me to do. Mm -hmm. And then open your eyes and your heart. Do not have an expectation of what kind of places God wants you to be. Mm -hmm. And once he speaks to you, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's really powerful right there. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And then you grow. It's so, it's so interesting mm -hmm. because sometimes we're looking for places that fit our own ideas of that's how right. it should mm -hmm. be for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When God is like, no, 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 the soil that I'm looking for, it's going to be maybe a little bit mm -hmm. sour for you because it's mm -hmm. perfect for your growth. 
So don't go with expectation how it needs to look like. Mm -hmm. Go with like God. Is this is the place for me? Mm -hmm. Once you feel that you are home, however God will speak to you, be rooted in yeah. Him and in that place. Rain or shine, Amen. Mm -hmm. Whether there's a you know a dryness, desert, or lots of rain coming, be rooted. Yeah. And as you get rooted in God, doing what God is asking, you will flourish. You will flourish. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's really good. All right. Next question. To those who are new believers, what would be your advice to them to still be connected with God and not discouraged since churches are closed right now? Mm. Um, yeah. To new believers, to all believers, my advice would be, once again, be able to separate God from the church. Mm. So it's not because churches are closed now that God is closed. You mm. know, this is the perfect opportunity mm. now to be at home and to literally get to know this God outside mm. of the gathering even though the gathering is important mm -hmm. um create an atmosphere like like my mom was saying open the bible this is a perfect time to read into the word go over different verses listen to some music sing write mm -hmm. you know talk to god have a, a real conversation so don't be discouraged at all you know it's not because the mm -hmm. pastor is not there this is not there that mm -hmm. you know christianity is over the mm -hmm. amazing thing about Christianity is that we're not limited. Mm -hmm. There's certain religions where you can't even pray in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Christian, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Christianity is not that way. Mm -hmm. God is everywhere and anywhere. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you are, that's where God is. Mm -hmm. So that's the, an encouragement I want to give you. And don't forget that. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that. So don't be discouraged. Mm -hmm. Be happy. Mm -hmm. And when you go back to church now, when you worship and when you praise with the whole, at the whole team, the whole atmosphere that's created... It's going to be more personal now. Mm. You know, you're going to be like, yeah, I'm worshiping a God that I really know now. Mm. So if you're a new believer, this is a great time for you. Mm. You know, other people, they've been there for years. This is a great time for you to really be kind of alone with this God mm. and really get to know him. So mm. congratulations mm. to those people. Mm. Amen. Amen. You know, um, what this virus having mm -hmm. us being outside one another has made all of us to redefine our walk with God because now you're not depending on going, being with other people to pray. Now you have to make a decision. Yes. I'm going to pray with myself for myself and mm -hmm. connect with my God. So there's something so great about this confinement because it shows the true color of where you are as a person by yourself yes. apart from gathering. So use that opportunity to get to know God, to redefine your relationship mm -hmm. with God by yourself and Him. And listen to our messages yeah. because the Spirit of God is not confined, yes. is not limited. It will go through you as you listen to the Word yeah. of God. Me, all I have ever done in my Christian walk, I always knew. The Bible said, this book of the law mm -hmm. in Joshua do not let it leave your eyes. Listen to it. Put it in day and night. From your ears, from your eyes, from your mouth, from your nose, whatever. Mm. So me, I always, beside church during the week, I never let this book of the law mm. depart from my eyes. So mm. I heard it through song. Mm. I heard it through books. Mm -hmm. I heard it to, you know, preaching. Yeah. I heard it through because I had to feed my spiritual being. So I had to put it all over That's me. Right. And it has built me. Mm -hmm. And make me mature faster because I decided I'm going to feed myself with this, yes. as the Bible says. And then when come times that are challenging comes, whatever you had put inside, start mm -hmm. coming outside yes. to sustain you and to strengthen you. Exactly. Good. This question is for you. It's one of the first one. It says, how do you separate ministry as a parent so you can make sure you've done your role as a parent, but not at the cost of your ministry and vice versa? I think you can read it. So, How do you separate ministry as a parent so you can make sure you've done your role as a mm. parent but not at the cost of your ministry and vice versa? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the way I'm understanding that is how do you find a balance the about balance. doing ministry yeah. versus being yeah. a parent? Yeah, making sure you've done your role as a parent but also as a minister. Uh, that's a very interesting question. I'm, I'm just trying to redefine it. Because for me parenthood ministry is who I am meaning what this is my daughter mm -hmm. she's my daughter but she's somebody I need to minister the only difference a minister 
to her differently. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. They're saying, how do you fulfill your role as a parent and as a pastor? Mm -hmm. How do you balance both? I mean, from my it, understanding. Yeah. Um, I think, I, you know, I think I can't say that it's, this is what I do from Monday to Sunday, because if you are in ministry, you know that ministry is not eight to five. Ministry is yes. 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So with wisdom and growing and maturity, you get to differentiate what's important versus what's urgent. Because there will always be urgency in the ministry. There's always something to take care of. There's always somebody to minister to. So for me as a mother, I need to know what is important as this season and at this time. Mm -hmm. So whatever that's important, I need to give it time. So it's very seasonal. It's really mm. knowing the priority, the time, the stage where your children are. I remember when I was in Montreal, I went to start a church. I mean, I, <laughs> I was always on the phone until one day my daughter said, mommy, you are always on the phone. I always on the phone, always on the phone. I would pick her up, I'm on the phone, always on the phone. And that was a clue that my daughter was saying, hey, you take, you're giving more time to ministry than me. So when I heard that, she, I said, okay, baby, Aisha, this is what we're going to do. Once I pick you up from school, no ministry, unless you give me permission. So that was the deal I decided to do with Aisha. Mm -hmm. So then when I pick her up, I need to make sure the phone is down. You know, it, had a, it was a training because I was in the beginning of building a church, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But then when, so it's just a balance. You got to go step by step mm -hmm. and find your groove because every family is different. At that point, my husband wasn't there. He was here. So it was different. So I had to be everything for everybody. Yes. So, but I had to find a balance. You know, mm -hmm. but knowing that both are as important, but knowing which one is more important mm -hmm. at that time, at that time. At that time. Yeah. So that's what it is. Being flexible, you know, there's mm -hmm. no ABC mm -hmm. to how to do things. Just be flexible and be wise in knowing what to do and what not to do at the right time. I hope I'm helping somebody. That's really good. Yeah. That's really good. So we're going to actually close for the questions. Feel free to send some by inbox for next time. But I want us just to pray, you mm -hmm. know, for for those who, because this is about church hurts, mm -hmm. you know, no matter mm -hmm. who you are, you probably have experienced it to a mm -hmm. certain degree. Mm -hmm. And it's really, we're talking about it, you know, laughing, but mm -hmm. it's really deep. Mm -hmm. It's profound. It's painful. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, the place where I found happiness all mm -hmm. of a sudden became the place where I felt, I don't want to, I don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. You know, so I really want us to pray for you, for God really to really help you. Mm -hmm. Because this church hurt stuff, a human being can't really help you. Mm -hmm. Only God can really meet you where you're at and help you mm -hmm. come out of it mm -hmm. and to fix your heart, remove, you know, I would, the state of my heart at the time, very bitter, mm -hmm. very angry. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the outside, it looks like anger, but from the inside, it's a child crying. Mm -hmm. So many of you are sitting down, you're crying on the inside, mm -hmm. even though you're reacting in a different way. So I want us to really speak to that baby inside of you, mm. even if you're 50 years old, mm. that baby inside of you who's crying, mm. you know, they, they kicked you out, they mm. rejected you, mm. they judged you, they mm. didn't give you enough time, maybe they spoke a negative word upon you, um, you were betrayed, there's a list, a list of things that mm. maybe you've experienced. But whatever it is, mm. that child is crying out mm. and it needs to hear the voice mm. of hope. Mm. The voice of, of God pulling them out of that mm. pit, mm. out of that grave, I would even say. And say, mm. you know what? There's hope. Come back. Mm -hmm. Come back home. Come back to the very place where you were hurt because that's where I want to restore you. Mm. I don't want to restore you alone in your room. I want to restore you there. That same very place. Mm. But mm. you need courage. It takes, mm -hmm. courage. it takes courage. You know, sometimes you... If I had left the church, mm -hmm. it would be hard for me to come back because mm -hmm. of my pride. I'd be like, I'm not going back, mm -hmm. even though I need to. Mm -hmm. But God is saying, I want to take you back there and I want to heal you. So I'm praying that the words that we're going to speak tonight mm -hmm. are really just going to 
pick you up mm. pick you up you mm, know what i'm saying mm, so mm. really get connected i'm mm -hmm. gonna put some music yes 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 and we're gonna pray for you yes yes yes. this yes. right here is an encounter it's not just a video it's an encounter with your god and it's an encounter of restoration and i'm so happy you know, knowing you know when you you can be the one hurting others and that's you don't right. even know. that's right so that's right we give you praise we give you praise we give you praise Father God, we thank you that this is an encounter for somebody. There's somebody at the sound of our voice, Father God, that you are touching, you're tugging today to open their heart so that the Spirit of God can come and comfort and bring healing and restoration. We give you praise, Father God, because you are the Spirit of God that heals, that touch. Father God, go deep in the heart of that woman, that man, who needs some restoration? Some of you, it's not in the church you've been hurt. Some of you, it's in your family. Some of you, it's in your friendship. Some of you, it's in your relationship. God is calling you out of that place of depression where you have bowed down to that pain. I see even now somebody whose head is bowed down to like that. God is saying, arise again. Lift up your eyes again because your, your, the, the, your healing and your restoration comes from above. Don't go down in your pain and in your discouragement. God says, lift up your eyes again because you are worthy. You are worthy to be loved and to love again. You are worthy to be restored. God is speaking to you. Do not bow down in pain in suffering, in, 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 in confusion, thinking that there's no hope for you. I, I'm, I'm just going to call you forward. Call your spirit forward from that place of wound and disappointment. I say, Kumi, rise up, rise up. There's hope for you. There's hope for you. There's hope for you. Come on, rise up. I can see you. And I'm going to call you forth by the spirit of God so that the enemy that has put you down can release you from that bondage. You are made to stand up strong and worthy. You should not be ashamed of who you are. You should not be ashamed for, of where you come from. You should not be ashamed of what was done to you. It was not your fault. It was not, the, you are not the cause. The devil just wanted to kill, destroy you and mess up your life. But I see the, 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 the sun rising up upon your situation father god we give you praise we give you praise for that person who feels bent down who feels discouraged whose yes, spine has yes, been yes, broken, yes, yes, who cannot yes, stand yes, yes. strong. We give you praise, oh. Father God, for your healing touch, for your salvation touch to come upon that person in the mighty name yes. of Jesus. Healing is yes. your portion today in the mighty in name Jesus of Jesus. Name. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, no, I see somebody right now, you're in your house, and this can apply to many people. I'm seeing a kid I keep repeating this. I'm seeing a child. You may be old, but I'm seeing a child inside who's been very wounded and this is your state right now but i see you reaching up your hand and i'm stretching out my hand towards you right now and prophetically i want you to grab my hand right now grab my hand through the screen right now and allow me to pull you out allow me to take you out of your prison allow me to take you out of your fear you're afraid you're ashamed but take my hand right now it's the hand of god that's reaching out to you through this Facebook, take me by the hand and rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. Yes, you feel like crying, you feel like you're in pain. Allow those tears to come out and allow the child that's inside to come out of the prison, to come out of the prison, to come out of the pain, to come out of the bitterness, to come out of the fear. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for this lady. God, take me by the hand. Take me by the hand. Rise up out of your pain. Rise up out of your humiliation. Rise up. God is calling you to rise up right now. He wants you to take a step. He wants you to extend your hand right now. And he's touching you. He's touching you where you are. He's touching you in your living room. He's touching you in your room. He's touching you.
touching you in your kitchen. He's touching you in your car. Come out of the place of darkness. Oh, there's a hope for you. There's a hope for you. There's a hope for you. People said that it was done for you. People are even mocking you. People are saying that you're hopeless. People are saying that you are ashamed. But rise up because God is taking you back. He's taking you back to that place. All you need to do is extend your hand. Oh, Robo Shekere Mama. I give you praise. I see a woman. You've been having a hard time conceiving. And words of judgment came against you. Because they said it's it's because of that you can't have a baby. It's something you have done. God is saying he wants to remove the shame. There's been roots of shame that have come because you have not been able to have a baby. We today we uproot those roots in the mighty name of Jesus. We remove the shame that was put against you in the mighty name of Jesus. Spirit of God, we pray that you would come and fill that womb with your life, with your breath of life. Speak life Speak forth a baby, a newborn in that womb, mighty God. We give you praise, Father God. We decree and declare restoration Restoration. of the heart. And we decree and declare a miracle in your womb even now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We uproot every seed of bitterness, of shame. We uproot every seed that has caused by wound and pain out of your hearts even now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we uproot it. We uproot it. We uproot it from your hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. And we speak restoration even now in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise, God. We give you praise, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm feeling something right now. This is a special word for somebody. Mm. You grew up in a Catholic home, Mm. but something inside Mm. of you Mm. is pushing you, Mm. you know, into a different direction. Mm. 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 And you're just a little bit afraid inside you, you know, but you're a little bit afraid because of your entourage, because of your family specifically. Mm. Mm-hmm. But my message to you is mm. go there, mm. go there. You, mm. you don't know what it looks like, but wherever your heart is pushing you, go to that place, go to that church, go to those people. Do not be afraid about your family. The rest will align, but that message is specifically for you, you Catholic girl. Mm. So, Listen to what God is telling you right now and don't be don't be afraid of judgment. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Father God, I remove every limitation from the mind of that beautiful Amen. girl. Amen. Father God, that she would open her heart and her spirit and just yeah. jump into it. Yes. Jump into it, yes. Father God. An encounter that encounter. she will never forget in the mighty name of Jesus. Encounter, yes. The Bible says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God unto salvation. Father God, every spirit of shame, Mm -hmm. we break it. We break it. That make us not be able to share our faith and our testimony yeah. to express ourselves fully of what God is doing in us and through us. We break, yeah. we yeah. break that yoke of shame upon our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh yes, oh yes. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We give you praise, God. We give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 Final words, and then you pray for people, yeah. and we're gonna end. Hallelujah. So, really, my heart for you today is that you really caught something mm. out of all the things I said today. I pray that a special word came just for you mm. out of all the questions that we've mm. answered today. Mm. I pray that you received an answer mm. that you're looking for, or you received the courage to go look for those answers. Mm. Mm. And whoever you are, you know, who maybe ran away because you're afraid, Mm -hmm. don't be afraid to come back home. Don't be afraid of the shame. Don't be afraid of people looking at you. Mm -hmm. You know, go to that very place and serve the very people that may have pushed you away or may have hurt Mm -hmm. you. God is calling you. There's many of you, you know, 
you have ideas mm. but you feel like you're not worthy to mm. do it mm. you're like but my life was not perfect i'm mm. still doing this this mm. and that do it mm. do it god is not looking for perfection mm. he's looking for a heart that's willing and a mm. heart that's courageous enough to go mm. after mm. it mm. so my wish for you is that mm. you become all that god has Amen. for you Amen. everything that he you know he wrote down even mm. when you were in the womb of your mother my mm. prayer is that it comes to life mm. in this season even mm. in this confinement mm. we're soon exiting this season mm. of confinement mm. i pray that he does a work mm. a quick work inside of you mm. so that those things can come into manifestation mm. and you can be a blessing and you can be fearless mm. do not mm. be afraid do mm. not be afraid mm. you know be mm. courageous mm. be strong mm. and honestly mm. i just i love you all so much and mm. Once again, if you need mm. to talk, because, you know, sometimes you want to talk to someone maybe you don't see all the time, send us a message and mm. just release everything that's on the inside. Mm. Release everything that's on the inside. Your heart is too precious. Mm. This is something I'm learning in the past mm. few days. Mm. My heart is too precious. Mm. I cannot keep, my heart is not a junkyard. Mm. Not a <laughs> my heart is not a junkyard. So if you feel like pouring out all the garbage mm. on someone, send us a message. Mm. Do everything you can to protect that heart of yours. Mm. Mm. Amen. Amen. I love you all so much. Amen. May the blood of Jesus cover you. Watch this video over again if mm. you need to. Mm. Share it with someone who may need mm. it. Mm. If you're, you're in your room right now, you're crying, you're not feeling, you know, you don't feel like it's done, continue the work with God. This is a mm. good opportunity now to have that encounter. Mm. Put on a worship music mm. and lay flat on your mm. stomach, whatever it is, cry and pray and just release everything that's inside of you. Mm. It's going to feel really good. Mm. Do you have mm. something to Praise with? the Lord. We speak peace. Yes. We speak courage to you. We speak hope to you. Know that we are here. We love you. Yes. But more so, there's a God in heaven yes. who loves you yes. even more. We'll see you again. I'm just praying that my daughter will allow us to do this again. Because I felt today that you have a lot to give. And people want to hear what God has placed inside of you. So hopefully in this week, next week, we can come back again. God bless you God all. Bless you guys. We love you so much. We love you. Go ahead in the power and the strength of God. Yes. Amen. And rejoice. Yes. Be glad. And I say again, yes. rejoice. Amen. Hallelujah. Love you all. Bye now. Bye.